Hello and welcome to CVAT Academy, your go-to training hub for mastering data annotation with CVAT. In this video, we'll explore annotation with cuboids. We'll see how to label a 3D model or a 2D object in an image with cuboids, as well as explore its different drawing methods. Let's get started. This tool is located here on the toolbar. It represents a volumetric bounding box. Cuboids are most commonly used for 3D tasks, but in some cases they can also be applied to 2D images. We annotate an object using cuboid and the from rectangle method. First, we create an annotation in the form of a bounding box, but at this stage, it is important not to include the entire object, but only one of its sides. Once the bounding box is drawn, a cuboid is automatically created. Let's take a closer look at the cuboid. Its front side is highlighted with a gray frame. This is the main face. On it, there are points that can be used to adjust the size of the cuboid. You can change the orientation of the cuboid's front face. Open the object menu and select Switch Orientation. The front face can only be assigned to three sides. Its placement depends on visibility. If the left face is blocked while the right one is visible, the front face is assigned to the right side. If the left face is visible while the right one is blocked, the front face is assigned to the left side. Additionally, the back face of the cuboid has three points that allow adjusting its height and depth. Using the front face of the cuboid, we can move it as a whole. It is also possible to adjust each cuboid face separately. To move the left or right face, hover the mouse over an area of the cuboid where these faces do not overlap with the front or back sides. These areas will be available for movement in this case. To move the back face, you can drag any part of it, except the areas that overlap with the front face. The last thing we can do with a cuboid is change its perspective. To do this, hold down the shift key and drag the top or bottom points located on the back face. If you need to reset the perspective to default values, open the object menu by clicking the three dots and select Reset Perspective. <laughs> Let's annotate another object using the cuboid. The cuboid has a second annotation method by four points. This method is faster as it reduces the time needed to adjust the cuboid's shape. Using it, we define the height, width, and depth of the cuboid with four points or three lines. The first three points define the front face, as well as the height and width of the cuboid. The last point determines the depth. The order of the points is not strictly important. You can annotate in different ways and still get the same result. Now let's look at cuboids in 3D tasks. First, let's examine the workspace for 3D tasks. The main part of the screen is occupied by a window, displaying the overall 3D scene. In the bottom corners, left and right, there are navigation buttons. These can be controlled using the mouse or keyboard keys. To use buttons in the left panel, you also need to hold down the Alt key. To use arrow keys, you need to hold Shift. Controlling the camera in 3D space using the keyboard is not always convenient, so the mouse can also be used. Holding the left mouse button rotates the camera. Holding the right mouse button moves the camera sideways and adjusts its height. Holding the middle mouse button zooms in and out. Scrolling the mouse wheel also zooms in and out. To the right of the 3D scene window, there are context images. These images are linked to the current frame and serve as a hint for the annotator, helping them better understand the context and correctly recognize objects. At the bottom of the interface, there are three projection windows displaying the top, side, and front views of the selected object. Each of these windows can be expanded to full screen, resized, moved to another location.
Context images can be removed and if needed, added back by clicking plus. In the context image settings, you can select another image from the list. This button allows stretching all windows to fit the workspace. If you need to reset the interface to its default layout, click the reset button. Let's remove the context images and enlarge the projection windows a bit. Now we find the object in the 3D scene that needs to be annotated, for example, this car. We activate the cuboid tool. Now a cuboid appears in the 3D scene following the mouse pointer. At this moment, mouse camera control becomes unavailable, but you can still move the camera using the buttons on the screen or keyboard keys. Next, we need to align the cuboid with the object so that they intersect or are as close as possible. To place the cuboid, double-click the left mouse button. After being placed in the 3D scene, the cuboid will be locked in place. To move it, press the Shift plus N combination. Next, we need to edit the dimensions of the cuboid. We can do this in the projection windows located below. First, in the top window, we align the cuboid more precisely with the object and rotate it by dragging the green point to match their orientation. If necessary, use the mouse wheel to zoom in and adjust the view. Next, in the side window, we adjust the cuboid size to fit the object. In the front window, we check that the object is fully enclosed in the cuboid. In most cases, adjusting the size in two projections is enough for accurate annotation. Now let's check how the result looks in the 3D scene. Let's annotate another object using the same method. In this video, we have explored the Cuboid tool and its applications in both 2D annotations and 3D tasks. We have examined two annotation methods for images, learned how to resize, change orientation, and adjust perspective of a cuboid, and also covered working with the 3D scene and projection windows in 3D tasks. Now we have a complete understanding of how Cuboid annotation works in different formats. Let's continue learning annotations in practice.